Hey, what's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day. Although something uh, unfortunate happened, I learned something from it, and today is going to be kind of an advanced topic. Um, but for you beginners, this is something that will benefit you to know now. Um, and there are many experts who still make this mistake. And uh, I'm going to uh, correct the problem right now, even if you haven't even started doing this yet. So let me uh, backtrack a little bit. This is a TDS meter, okay? It, 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 it picks up anything in the water, you know, uh, dust, carbonate hardness, general hardness, ammonia, literally anything that's in the water. If there's nothing in it, you get a TDS of zero, okay? So with that knowing, I started using one because I use RO water in my fish tanks, and then I remineralize them, all right? Um, well, several months ago, I had got a dehumidifier, and, um, you know, it, it collects the moisture out of the air, and the bucket fills up with water, and I would dump it out, and then I... Uh, had realized that the way it functions is exactly the way distilled water and rainwater, how it evaporates out in nature, are exactly the same. Uh, it's, it's, it's essentially distilled water, atmospheric moisture condenses on the internal coils and drops off and collects into the uh, bucket. And so I was like, I bet this stuff is as pure as rain. So I stuck my TDS meter in there, and it read 3. Now, because of my knowledge, I know that if you have a TDS uh, reading of anything between 0 to 50, that's considered pure water. It depends, though, what is making those parts per million. You know, so it, it's pure, but there's one element that if it's in there, it is poisonous. And so anyway, I had, I had used it a couple times. I was like, oh, I don't need to use an RO unit anymore. This just collects water all the time. So I had done a water change on one of my tanks uh, twice. And um, uh, w with the uh, water out of my uh, dehumidifier, which is behind me. And um, I had started to notice after about a week that one of my fish started to have symptoms of ammonia poisoning and I don't have ammonia problems I my tanks are fully loaded with plants every square inch you know I keep my plant load to the max and fish to a very minimum because I understand how uh, how it works you need your plant load high and your waste uh, load very low so your plants can handle the amount of ammonia happening so I'm you know so I was like so how is he having an ammonia issue right now. There's only a few fish in here, but he has a, a ammonia poisoning. And I know what that looks like. It's burning of the gills. They'll sink to the bottom, and you'll see their gills flare up and turn red because they're getting burned by ammonia. So I tested the water, and I saw ammonia. And I'm like, this is absurd. I've been putting RO water in there. And I, I sat there for a moment, and I said, wait. Last time, I didn't use my RO water. I used my dehumidifier water. So then I actually used um, uh, my testing strips uh, to test the water. Everything looked good. The only thing left was ammonia. So then I tested the ammonia. And keep in mind, my TDS out of my dehumidifier comes out at 3. That's pretty damn pure, you know. But guess what that 3 was? That 3 parts per million was ammonia. And I was shocked. So I started doing some research. If I'm looking down, it's because I had to write everything down. The mechanics behind a dehumidifier, it started blowing my mind. So first, let me tell you this. Aquascaping started in the 1930s. The first de dehumidifier was invented in 1902. Now, several decades ago, uh, in the aquascaping uh, hobbyist world, Thousands and thousands of Aquarius and Aquascapers started using dehumidifying uh, water from their dehumidifiers so they wouldn't have to buy an RO unit. And none of them tested the water. None of them. And, and they've been using it for years and killing animals and not understanding why. You know, this is why it's important to also test your water. You know, don't fully trust the TDS. Yes, it's correct, but know what it's picking up. 
You know, so I saw no harm in doing that. And uh, by the way, aquascaping uh, was invented and started in the Netherlands. I just, I've, I bumped into that and figured it out through all of this research because I had to dig through everything. So then I started researching the mechanics and the functions of how a dehumidifier works and how, how the hell is ammonia getting inside there? All right, so... Um, Anyway, like I said, the, you know, TDS of dehumidifier water will range anywhere between 3 and 20 parts per million. That's the same as RO water and rainwater. All right. Now, what happens is ammonia in the air diffuses into the water. The condensing coils, the, the condensing coil metals act as a chemical substrate for the ammonia in the air. And that metal is aluminum. Aluminum is the culprit as it oxidizes and combines ammonia with oxygen and then dumps into the water. Shocking. I couldn't believe it. And I figured out, you know, I'm like, okay, well, now I know there are thousands of people who are completely unaware of this and there are experts who who will defend to the death that you can use i mean i i i went into uh websites of old timers defending dehumidifier water it is poison not only is it poison for fish i mean three parts per million that's high 0.5 can kill a fish okay i'm i'm surprised the other two didn't get sick um so <laughs> um and uh, not only is it toxic to uh, fish, but 0.5 or higher can also kill a human. Yes, us humans can get ammonia poisoning, and it's permanent damage. Your fish gets ammonia poisoning, there's no turning back. You may get them to recover, but you've drastically reduced their lifespan. Um, uh, it's, it's like cancer. Eventually, it's going to catch up to you and get you. All right, you know, and that's if it doesn't kill them initially. And my guy is still going through this. And um, I don't use chemicals. I don't use uh, FERTs. I, I will not do chemical treatments when it comes to fish getting sick. It is, I do everything natural, and I let nature take its course, but I can't help it a little bit. And um, I don't want him to suffer. And I was trying to give myself, I said to myself, should I euthanize him? It's been a week now. He's clearly suffering, and it had got to a point where he couldn't even swim up to the food anymore. I would, I would feed the top, and all the fish would swim up there, eat it all, and he would get nothing because he couldn't swim to the top. So for the past three days, I would take a piece of food, put my hand in there all the way to the bottom, right next to his mouth, and he would just literally crawl with his head over and nibble it out of, out of my fingers. And, you know, I, I felt terrible, you know, but I, I'm feeding him. So... I'm like, this has been going on for a week, and I've been having to hand feed him for three days. Am I torturing him? Well, what's the right thing to do here? And I thought about what would happen in nature, you know, because they can get ammonia poisoning in nature. You know, rainwater, yeah, it comes down pure, but when it hits the ground, same thing happens. It can get ammonia and other toxins into it, you know. Um, so if he was out in nature, the ammonia poisoning would take its tor uh, course, and he would suffer and slowly die over a month. And, I, and then I, I thought to myself, you know, us humans are so quick to pull the plug. Not just talking about fish. I'm talking about in everyone in general with humans. we got a sick human who we think, you know, will never come out of a coma. And first thing that comes to a doctor's mind, let's just pull the plug. It's too expensive. I, 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 I don't feel that's right. He may be suffering, but if he was out in the wild, there wouldn't be a human trying to help him through it. He would just suffer and die, you know. So yes, he's suffering, but at least he has a chance. So I'm, I, uh, I've decided I'm not going to euthanize him. I'm going to help him to the best of my ability, like I've been doing. And every day, I swap out all the water with uh, RO water, or purified water, because that's the best best treatment. Uh, chemicals and other things that, uh, you know, can kill bacteria and uh, apparently kill ammonia. They, they, it doesn't work like that. They, the, the stuff is still there, and those types of chemicals are just a gimmick to get you to buy more products. Um, 
The best treatment with the sick fish is always just treat it with fresh, clean water every day and, and let their wounds heal on their own. And this is an internal problem, you know. So, um, anyway, um, I, I, I guess that's all I really have to say about it. But I'm making this video because I don't want, you know, any anyone who's following me now to make the mistake that I made. I jumped to conclusions. I trusted my TDS meter. It read three, which is as pure as rain, but the three parts per million were deadly components that could even kill a human. So, uh, yeah, I'm having to learn my lesson the hard way, and um, I'll show you the fish. If you can even see him, he is not dead. He's just he's just stuck on his side. Uh, he can't move, um, and that's because he's terribly ill and weak. Um, he can't swim at all. So um, I'm going to help him to the best of my ability. But you know, I do do a lot of joking and and you know say some funny things there. And generally, my videos are you know can be somewhat fun. Today is a more serious topic. Um, but it's a topic that should be taken seriously, um, and it, I learned a valuable lesson. You know, um, for the past six months, I stopped using testing strips altogether. I relied on my uh, TDS because I know what my TDS should be in all of my tanks. I want them all to be under 300, and if they go above 300, I do a water change. And then I came across something new. Um, you know, so for you beginners, a lot of you don't even have a TDS meter and haven't even gotten that far in, 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 into it. Um, and, and yes, it is still a useful um, item to have because um, it's not just important with uh, shrimp. It is important with fish, and it is most definitely important with plants. Uh, plants can't photosynthesize in water that uh, has over 300 parts per million. So my, the only thing my dehumidifier was doing for me was feeding my plants. So, um, and I don't need to feed my plants. You know, I use organic soil on the fish, you know, fertilize them on top of it, and it all it's all self-sustaining. So, anyway, um, if you see this video, you know, uh, write it down and, and remind yourself, you know, okay, my TDS readings are, are great. Let me make sure that none of that is ammonia. Okay, so that's the lesson I learned, and, you know, um, yeah, I'm a little bummed out, and this guy, his name's Dave. I don't name any of my fish, but his name's Dave, uh, and I've had him for, for years, and he has transferred from tank to tank to tank until I started getting larger and larger tanks, and now he's in a mansion, you know, and uh, he's just been with me the longest, so there's some sentimental value, and uh, yes, he's just a fish, but that's not the point. Uh the point is, is that, the, you know, these animals are dependent on us to do the right thing and have the intelligence and all the knowledge that we need to have to take care of them adequately. And unfortunately, there, there are no fish vets. Um, you know, us, we hobbyists, we are the doctors. We're the doctors, the judge, the jury, the whole nine yards. So, you know, um, although I've been doing this for several years, it... it, it I always learn something. There's always something waiting around the corner. And when there is something waiting around the corner, especially if it's detrimental, I feel an obligation to share it. You know, um, no, I don't have hundreds of thousands of, subs of subscribers, but at least I can help, you know, the ones that I do have. So, anyway, I hope you all learned something too. If you have any uh, other questions uh, about TDS or anything in general, period, please feel free to ask. Um, yeah, I, I always leave something out, um, but I do appreciate uh, all of my new subscribers. I, I did get a few um, uh, today and yesterday, uh, so shout out to Ian Webb, uh, shout out to Pat Downs, um, and there were a couple other that didn't show up in an email. Um, I appreciate you all, and uh, thank you for taking the time to, to watch this video. I appreciate it, um, and uh, we will catch you next time. And if you're down in the dumps, do something about it.